2.2. Okay, here's a question. My name is Jim. In how many ways can I rearrange the letters of my name? Well, I can answer this by the brute force method, just literally rearrange the letters and count how many ways. For example, it could be Jim, or it could be Jimmy, or it could be Image, or it could be Ijim, or it could be uh, M Midgey, or it could be Midge. So six ways. But let me think of this as a multiplication problem in terms of doing several tasks. In fact, I've got three tasks. Basically, I have three slots to fill, and my first task is fill in the first slot. My second task is fill in the last slot. Oh, I'll go in order. First task, fill in the first slot. Fill in the second slot. This is my second task. Fill in the third slot for my third task. All right, how many ways can I complete each task? Well, there are three ways to complete the first task. How many ways can I fill in the first slot? Well, there are three choices of letters. Three ways to complete that. How many ways can I fill in the second slot? Well, I've already used up one letter. That leaves me two letters to play with. There are two ways to complete my second task. And how many ways can I complete my third task? Well, I've already used up two letters. Leave me one letter left over. There's only one way to complete my third task. And the, the multiplication principle says, how many ways can complete all three tasks together? Well, the answer is three times two, which is six ways. Times one, which is six ways. Bingo. There are the six ways. In fact, actually, my name is James. That's my formal name. So I've been using that a lot more lately. So how many ways can I rearrange the letters of James? Well, to me, that's really a five-task problem. I've now got five slots to fill. Uh, there are five ways to fill in the last slot, one of the five letters. There are four ways to fill in this slot, because I've already used one up. Four, three, two, one. But who knows, how, I, mean, I can order my tasks in any way I like. Ooh, I'll use the word order. Um, there are actually, there's the ways to complete each of my five, five tasks. The multiplication principle says the total number of ways to complete all five tasks would be the product of those numbers. Five times four times three times two times one. It's 120. In fact, we'll see as you play this game that products of the form one times two times three up to some number n arise a lot and people call that n factorial. That's the shorthand. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 would be 120. Oh, we're at it going downwards that way as opposed to upwards. I suppose it doesn't matter. Uh, 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3. They'll write that one upwards rather than downwards. is 6 and so on. In fact, read the notes below this course, uh, below this video, excuse me, for some more on factorials. They come up a lot, in fact, they'll be our friends as we go through this particular work. All right, but, but I've been pulling the wall over our eyes a little bit. My name is actually too nice. Jim, James. What if my name, say, were Bob? And I wrote all in capital letters, so there's actually two identical letters in this name. How many ways could I rearrange the letters of the word Bob? Well, I could do it by the brute force method, just literally write them out. I can see there's going to be B-O-B -B itself, or there's B-B-O, B-B-O, or there's uh, what, ob ob -b -ob -b -b or something. All right, three ways. Okay, that's grand. I can work my way through it by brute force, but things get a little bit scarier if I do the word like cheese. Now, there is a way to think of this in terms of just completing tasks. It actually is not too difficult. Um, that approach is written in the material below this video. But what I want to do now is actually take a different approach to this. I want to talk about the ways to rearrange the letters of the word cheese using a technique I've already done. Namely, that's a good problem solving strategy. Could I use what I've just done to help me solve the next level problem? Namely, if all the letters were different, this problem was easy to answer. And the trouble with cheese is that the letters aren't different. I've got some repeats. So here's a problem solving strategy. Can I imagine that these letters were different? What would the answer be? All right, if the letters were different, maybe they're like E sub 1, E sub 2, E sub 3, then I know this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is a six task problem. Six slots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, f f first task, fill in the first slot, six ways. Second task, fill in the second slot, all up to the sixth task, sixth slot. I know the answer would be six times five times four times three times two times one, six factorial. So if the letters were different, the re ways to rearrange the word cheese would be six factorial. But the E's aren't different. So what I'm going to do 
to be a little sneaky. I'm going to actually start listing all 720 ways of doing this. Let me, let me clear the board because I'm going to need that space. Okay, let me list all 720 ways to rearrange the letters of the word cheese, assuming those E's are distinct. Here goes. One way could be E1, H, S, E2, E3, C. Uh, E1, H, S, E3, E2, C. E2, H, S, E1, E3, C. E2, H, S, E3, E1, C. You see I'm being a little systematic. Uh, E3, H, S, E2, E1, C. E3, H, S, E1, E2, C. All right. And then there's a, a H, E1, E1, E2, S, C, E3, H, E1, E3, S, C, E2, and yes, I meant I am bored as well. All right, so I could list all 720 ways, and I was a little systematic, so I kind of get the basic structure of my answers the same. But the real question is, these one, twos, and threes that distinguish the E's are something I created. They weren't really part of the problem. So what happens if I get rid of those distinguishing features? And look at this group of six. If I get rid of all the subscripts on the E's, you can see that all these answers collapse into one basic answer, E, H, S, E, E, C. And all this group of six would collapse to the answer H, E, E, S, C, E, and so on. So actually, everything collapses by a factor of six. So my answer here, six factorial, which was distinguished E's, gets divided by six. Now, let me be very clear. What was that six really? We can see what I was doing here. I was going through all the ways to arrange the E1s, E2s, and E3s. This is its own little word problem, which I knew was three factorial. Three times two times one equals six ways to do that. So I was really dividing by three factorial. Beautiful. So we repeat E's. I do the basic answers, though they're, they're distinct, and I divided by the fact how many ways those E's could actually collapse the answers if I got rid of the subscripts. All right, let's go up a level in difficulty. That was grand. We're ready for it. Clean the board again. Okay, we're ready for the next notch up. This time, let's rearrange the letters of the word cheeses. All right, I've got repeat E's and repeat S's this time. Problematic. So can I reduce this to a problem I've solved before? Well, yes, if the letters are distinct, I know the answer. In fact, if this was E1, E2, and E3, and S1 and S2, this is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. Put them in seven slots, that's seven tasks. The multiplication principle says the answer will be seven times six times five da, 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 times four times three times two times one, seven factorial, 5,040, I believe that is. All right, now, let me start listing all 5,040 ways of doing this. Really? Well, let's see what happens. Uh, definitely one answer is going to be E1, C, H, uh, E2, E3, S, or an S1 and S2. And E1, C, H, E2, E3, S2, S, uh, whoops. Let me change the E's. E3, E2, S1, S2, E2, uh, Okay, there's going to be a group of six of all the way ways to rearrange the E's within that. Another group of six of all the ways to rearrange the E's within that, and so on. So when I remove the subscript for the E's, doo -doo 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 -doo, just as before, I know those groups of six will collapse. This answer will collapse to E, C, H, E, E, S1, S2. And maybe the next group will collapse to, I don't know, C, E, E, S1, H, E, S2, and so on. That means everything's collapsed by a factor of six. But what's that six really? It's really the three factorial ways of rearranging those E's. So really divided by three factorial. Okay, but I've still got the S's going on, S1 and S2. But the thing is, at some point, I'll have this arrangement with the e, E's, C's, H, and S1 and S2. Later on, I'll have another arrangement of E, C, H, E, E, and the other S1s and S2 in the other way. And those two answers, when I remove the S subscripts, will themselves collapse to just a single answer. Uh oh, my board technique is lousy. Uh, e, H, C, H, E, E, S, S. So when I remove the subscripts for the S's, those collapsed answers will collapse again by another factor of two. In fact, that's really the two ways to arrange those two S's, S1 and S2. It's really dividing by two factorial. 
So a fraction divided by an integer is just 7 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial. This little piece of algebra is a little bit scary, but there we go. Um, probably what I'd do actually. Okay, bad board technique. I've got a fraction in the numerator, I've got something strange in the denominator. Let's multiply the top by 3 factorial and the bottom by 3 factorial. On the top, the 3 factorials cancel, so I'm left with 7 factorial on the top, and I'm left with 2 factorial, 3 factorial on the bottom. There we go, I was right. All right, so that's it. The answer is 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial. I don't actually care what that number is. 5040 divided by 6 and then divided by 2, I could work it out. Grand. All right, so moving the substitutes to the e's caused one collapse by a factor of 3 factorial. That would then, by moving the substitutes for the s's, would cause a second collapse for rearranging the s's. I think we now know a general technique for rearranging letters in words, even though there's lots of repeat letters going on. Let's practice that in the next lesson. Oh, good stuff.